We've seen that when we have a negative externality, the social marginal cost lies above the supply curve. So the market quantity, which occurs where demand and supply intersect, is larger than the socially optimal quantity, which occurs where social marginal cost crosses demand. As a result, the market is producing too much. It's producing not just up to the optimal quantity, capturing this positive social surplus, but then beyond that, creating negative social surplus where the social marginal cost is larger than the social marginal benefit. That creates a deadweight loss triangle, which is this triangle here. We then said that since the market is producing too much, we could just tax that market. We could just impose a per unit tax. And if we impose just the right per unit tax, we could cause the market to produce the optimal quantity. And our intuition told us that that should eliminate this deadweight loss. We'll now show that that intuition is correct. We'll do that by calculating the total surplus without the tax and with the tax. So that total surplus includes consumer surplus and producer surplus. And it also includes the social damage from the externality. So we'll call it the externality cost. So without the tax, consumers pay the equilibrium price, the green price. And they get a surplus of everything above that price up to the demand curve. So that would be a, B area A, B, C, and D. A plus B plus C plus D. Producers would get a surplus below that price down to the supply curve. So that would give us area E, F, G, H, and I. So E plus F plus G plus H plus I. Now how much of an externality cost is, in, is there in this case? In other words, how much is the cost that's imposed on non-market participants? Well, for each unit that's being produced, the difference between the social marginal cost and the supply curve is that externality cost. So we have to add up all of those for the total quantity that's produced. So that'll give us that entire area between the social marginal cost and the supply curve up to the quantity that's produced. So we have to include this area as well. So J is included as well. So the externality cost is then C plus D, F plus G plus I plus J. And all of that is a cost, so that's negative. What about with the tax? Well, the consumer surplus would shrink because the price with the tax would rise. And so we just get everything above that price up to the demand curve. So consumer surplus shrinks to area A. Producer surplus is also going to shrink because producers are now selling at that lower price. They only get everything below that price down to the supply curve, H plus I. What about the externality cost? Well, now we're only producing this magenta quantity. So the externality cost would be the difference between the social marginal cost and the supply curve up to that quantity. So C, F, and I. And that would be negative. Now, the final thing we have to include is the tax revenue that gets collected. In the absence of a tax, there is no tax revenue. But with the tax, we get the tax revenue of the tax times the quantity that's being produced. So that would be the box B, C, E, and F. B plus C plus E plus F. We can now sum all of this to get total surplus. So before the tax is imposed, we can sum this column. And we've got a bunch of negative terms here that we can cancel. So we've got a negative C 
and a C, a negative D and a D, a negative F and an F, a negative G, a negative I, and a negative J that doesn't appear anywhere up here. What we're left with is A plus B plus E plus H plus J, I mean minus J. So A plus B plus E plus H minus J. So that's A plus B plus E plus H, that area between the demand curve and the social marginal cost curve to the left of the intersection, minus J, which is that negative area we have up here, the deadweight loss. What about with the tax? Well, with the tax, we can, can cancel the negative terms. So we've got a minus C and a C, so we can cancel that. A minus F and an F. And a minus I and an I. So what we're left with is A plus E plus B plus H. So A plus B plus E plus H. And that's everything. So there's no minus J here. We got rid of the deadweight loss by imposing the tax. And we're left with just this positive surplus area, A, B, E, and H. So the Pigouvian tax then eliminates the deadweight loss by causing the market to correct its overproduction and produce the optimal quantity once again. Now you can do the same thing for Pigouvian subsidies go through the same exercise and show that the Pigouvian subsidy eliminates the deadweight loss from the underproduction under positive externality.